Happy holiday, Stephanie. Hopefully it's not as bad as last year. Christmas time is here, ladies and gentlemen. And you know what that means. You know what comes with the wonder and, and, and majesty of Christmas. Christmas movies. But let me ask you something real quick. Are you a Santa denier? Be honest. Are you sitting in your chair right now getting really angry on Twitter, writing your strongly worded essay about how Santa isn't real and you're going to have sex with my mom? Well, I am here today to change your mind. I'm gonna make a believer out of you. Christmas movies are probably one of the most traditionally watched movies ever. I mean, since I was a child, I've watched The Grinch literally every single year without miss. But there is one Christmas movie that still to this day, I think about every single year, but I don't ever want to watch it. And I'm sure plenty of you watching know of this movie. A lot of times when I watched it, I was just in school. There were a few hours left of school and everyone was like all excited to get out. And then the teachers roll out the crappy box television on that little rolly thing and then they pop in Polar Express. But this movie, out of all Christmas movies, is the most unsettling and strange. Now, I don't know if this was just me when I was younger, but there was always a pit in my stomach every time I watched this movie. Like there was a looming presence of unsettling horror that came with this movie. And after rewatching it as an adult, that feeling is still there. There is a weird thing about this movie. So many shots of this movie just have the suspense level of a regular horror movie. And not only that, this movie's weird. This movie's really weird. A lot of things that happen in this movie just don't make any sense whatsoever. Sometimes the animation looks awful and disgusting. Other times it looks masterful and beautiful. And Tom Hanks is just everywhere. He's this guy. He's this guy. He's this guy. He's even this child. This movie should just be called Tom Hanks and the Santa Deniers. Okay, that's actually a pretty good band name. I, I might take that. Oh yeah, also um, this movie had a spin-off game, which why? How? So all aboard, you little stupid Santa deniers. I'm gonna make a believer out of you. The movie starts out as Tom Hanks narrating as the adult form of the main character. And the main character is just a huge Santa denier. He literally has files on top of files of tabloid nonsense that says Santa isn't real. He even went through this stupid fictional book called the Encyclopedia that said the North Pole is devoid of life. So in the thick of the night, the Polar Express appears. <laughs> And for some reason, this kid's like, hey, let, let's go outside. Let's see what's going on. I know I'm like an eight-year-old kid, and it's in the middle of the night, and there's a, a ghost train. Let's go check it out. Oh, and just so everyone knows, there is no character names in this movie. I'm serious. I had to look up on IMDb, and apparently the main character's name is just Hero Boy. So Hero Boy walks up to Tom Hanks, and he's like, hey, little shit, you want ghost train with me? I got a bunch of kids to start with. They got hot chocolate and everything. Then the kid is obviously like, oh yeah, let, let's go, bro. Oh God, is that snowman waving? Please, hurry up and kill it before it turns into Michael Keaton. Hey, hey you, yeah, you. Do you know what kind of train this is? Uh, yeah, so this kid's kind of like a know-it-all annoying kid. Oh. His character name is Know-It-All. Something really creepy about this movie. Yes, the atmosphere is disturbing and ominous. Yes, the train out of nowhere is just confusing and weird. But the thing that makes it worse is every child is just accepting this. They're just having fun, jumping around, singing their tunes. No child is asking like, hey, I wanna go back to my parents. Hey, who is this grown man that I just walked on this train with? Hey, where the hell are we going? Why is no one questioning why no one else is waking up from the train? It's only them. Only they can see it, but they don't care. So then we get the only character in the movie with the name, Billy, who is a kid who lives in a poor neighborhood. But Billy ends up telling Tom that he don't wanna go you know, because he's smart. But while the train is pulling away, he decides that he wants to get on. So then Hero Boy, like a hero would, pulls the emergency brake. So anyway, kid gets on, Tom Hanks starts singing about hot chocolate. Hey, we got it. Hey, we got it. Why? 
So the girl feels bad for the kid in the back and ends up hiding the hot chocolate under the seat so he could have some later. So Tom Hanks ends up going with her to give him the hot chocolate. But what oh, the girl left her golden ticket on the seat. See, these golden tickets are pretty important. So instead of just holding on to the ticket and waiting for the girl to return, he decides, hey, it's a good idea for a child to walk across two train carts while the train is in motion. Um, I do say this is quite unsafe for a child. So the wind catches the ticket and flies away. And then the movie spends, not exaggerating, five whole minutes following the ticket's path, flying through different regions of the, the area that they're in, I guess to like show how mystical it is or something. What, what the hell? What the hell? What, why? So girl gets back, can't find her ticket. Hero boy ends up fessing up, you know, like the hero he is. So since the girl does not have her ticket, she has to get thrown off the train. And now don't you? He's gonna throw her off the train. Yeah, he's gonna probably throw her right off the rear platform. It's standard procedure. That way she won't get sucked down under the wheels. They may slow the train down a little bit, but they're never gonna stop it. Jesus Christ, this kid is terrible. But miraculously, through the power of Christmas magic, the hero boy finds the ticket. So he runs to the back of the train to try to find her, and lo and behold, she's gone. Why is he looking out like she actually got thrown off? Does he really believe that Tom Hanks just tossed her off the back end of the train? Oh! And now he's just climbing on top of a moving train. Very normal thing to do. First of all, the movie is supposed to just have us accept that Tom Hanks took this little girl. Instead of just walking all the way through the inside of the train to the front, he took her out the back up to the top of the train and walked all the way to the front. Why is everyone acting so normal? Oh great, now we get a homeless Tom Hanks chilling on top of the train. So homeless Tom Hanks is a very, very interesting character and is definitely a very big ominous part of this movie. He gives the kids some shit water with a sock in it. Why? What is even the point of that? So after watching this movie a few times, I'm starting to realize who this character truly is. This character is actually the personification of this boy's doubts in believing in Santa Claus. The homeless Tom Hanks starts making fun of Santa Claus, explains to him that the reason the hero boy doesn't want to believe in Santa Claus is because he's afraid of getting duped or bamboozled. But, but you don't want to be bamboozled. You don't want to be let down to Primrose Bath. And this is where the movie confuses the hell out of me. Seeing is believing. Am I right? But what about this train? What about it? We're all really going to the North Pole. Aren't we? Aren't we? Are you saying that this is all just a dream? You said it, kid. Not me. Am I in a dream or not? All right, I'm scared and I'm confused and I need answers. So then the homeless man asks him one last question. Do you believe in ghosts? Interesting. So if you guys aren't aware, he is actually a ghost. And this is kind of a theory, but I think he is trying to see that if he actually physically sees Santa Claus, if he will still believe in him. Which I feel like this is kind of a reference to children going to see a mall Santa Claus. Because technically the kids are seeing him, but you could still see him and not believe. So he's basically saying you kind of need to have a little bit of faith and, you know, childlike wonder in order to truly believe that he is real. Take that, Santa deniers. <laughs> Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! So is it a dream or not? So homeless Tom Hanks now has skis and they are now flying down a train on skis while the train is going at an 80 degree angle. So the kid ends up in the front of the train and apparently the little girl is now driving the train. You're driving a train? They put me in charge. The engineer had to check the light. What? Oh, what's that kid? You lost your golden ticket? Well, sorry, you're gonna have to drive the train now. Oh yeah, and uh, the people who actually are driving or I guess conducting the train are just terrifying and weird. So then the train's accelerator breaks and now they can't slow down. Don't think Gee, first I cut her big shared off. Oh no! What should we do? Why are they at the front of the train? They're children. They're kids. Why are they there? But they slide onto a giant lake covered in ice 
which again, doesn't make sense. Why did they not plan for this? Did that lake just appear this year and they didn't realize it? Whoop, yeah, come on, dear, watch your step. I know we're on a train that just ran off the rails on a lake that is completely frozen. And at any point in time, this lake could crack and we could all plummet to our deaths. And definitely, if I dropped you, you're going to suffer a most painful death. But watch your fucking step! So Ghost Tom Hanks ends up saving their lives and the ice starts breaking. Then they figure out how to perfectly maneuver a sliding train back onto the tracks perfectly. <laughs> Christmas magic, Christmas miracle. So while they're walking to the back of the train, on top of the train again, why? Tom Hanks tells a story about how one time he slid off the top of the train, but he was saved by an unknown presence. It was ghost Tom Hanks. Sometimes the most real things in the world are the things we can't see. Honestly, I think conductor Tom Hanks and homeless Tom Hanks are two sides to the main character. The homeless guy is seeing is believing. The conductor is the most real things in the world are the things you can't see. Or another way we could look at it is these are two versions of him growing up. One of him growing up believing in Santa Claus and one not. Choose, choose your side, ladies and gentlemen. You wanna end up like homeless Tom Hanks? I don't think so, Santa deniers. I don't think so. You wanna end up like Chad Tom Hanks over here. Hear that, Santa deniers? If you don't believe in Santa Claus right now, you might end up like homeless ghost Tom Hanks on top of a train. Like this video in the next five seconds for you to believe, and if you don't like it, you're gonna die. Oh, great. He closed the door on the kid in a room with a bunch of terrifying dolls. Jeez, I really hope nothing scary happens. Oh my god! You are just like me, my friend. A Scrooge! So Ghost Tom Hanks scares the living shit out of Hero Boy because he's a Santa denier. He's a fucking loser. Oh yeah, and then there's a singing number. Putting up the Christmas tree with friends who come around. Okay. So they make it to the North Pole and there is a shitload of elves. Honestly, out of everything in the movie, ironically, the North Pole is probably the most realistic looking North Pole I've seen in a movie. You know, normally in the North Pole, it's kind of small or there's not really many elves. This is a pretty close representation of what it would look like if it actually was real. Which it is. It is. So the kid who's poor doesn't want to go out because he says Christmas doesn't work out for him. Christmas just doesn't work out for me. Ha! Poor! Okay, I know that was a joke, but I kind of feel bad for saying that. Then somehow, stupid hero boy detached one of the carts and now they're hurtling to their deaths. And somehow, they're just okay. Fair enough. We're gonna crash! Now, this part of the movie is probably the most ominous and just scary. Three children, alone, in a huge magical factory. And that's what makes it so creepy. This isn't a normal factory. This is unknown territory. This is a factory from a different world. Who knows what the hell is in here or what's gonna happen. So the girl goes on about how she can hear these bells, but Hero Boy can't hear it. It's coming from that tunnel. But they end up following the sound of these bells that he can't hear. And all they gotta do is just walk over the train tracks, which are about as wide as their feet over an endless abyss. So, um, you know, you know, they, they might die. Come on. Yeah, come on, pussy. What are you doing? You afraid to die? You afraid to accidentally slip and fall to your death? Oh my, stop being a pussy, okay? Every time I watch this scene, it just feels like they're being watched. I'm not sure if it's the wide shots that they do with the camera angles, but this whole time they are here, there is just some weird looming presence that someone is watching them. Great. Now the record's skipping. Number seven, Holly Greenbow. Uh, number seven, Bo? 
When we're this close to liftoff, what are they thinking down there? Okay, look. I know the song goes, he sees you when you're sleeping and he knows when you're awake, but um, I never really thought about how fucked up that would actually look until now. So they keep going through the North Pole fact. And again, the whole time, there was this ominous music playing on an old record player. After all of these really creepy, ominous parts, we finally get a break where Billy sees a gift that is for him. Out of my town! There's someone named Billy! Going to 11344 Edbrook Avenue. That's my address! So he ends up following the present into a giant slide of the corridors and, and big funnels and all that stuff, and then it leads to Santa's bag. So the bag gets airlifted to Santa Claus and then the elves do a little bungee jump and get them out of there. All right, you stowaways. Party's over. I was just following them. Then finally, the man himself, Santa Claus, arrives. He's making a list. Here. Checking it twice. Here. Where? But for some reason, the boy is having trouble seeing Santa Claus, and he's also having trouble hearing the bells on the reindeer. But then, by the power of the gods themselves, one of the bells that he cannot hear got detached and fell at his feet. He rings the bell, and he can't hear anything. Only the sounds of ghost Tom Hanks telling him, Doubt. Doubt. Press X for doubt. Okay. So then, in a magical moment, all he says is, I believe. I believe in Santa Claus. And then it starts ringing. I believe. Hear that, Santa deniers? That's all it takes. Just tell yourself right now, I believe. Boom. Now you believe. Oh shit, look, it's Tom Hanks as Santa Claus and he's looking good shit. So, so now we figure out the whole purpose of the Polar Express is to bring children to Santa Claus himself for him to give the first gift of Christmas. And now it is time for him to pick. And I guess all the other kids on the train just don't count. Like, look at them. They're just sitting in the background. Are they even real? Are they are they just dolls? Were they just fucking with me the whole time? Is anything real in this movie? So obviously Santa ends up picking Hero Boy to get the first gift and Hero Boy chooses the bell of believing. The first gift of Christmas! Oh yeah, he's also stupid because the bell he got as the first present of Christmas, he already lost it. I lost it. I lost the bell from Santa's sleigh. What an idiot. So Hero Boy goes home, he sees the train leave, and waves goodbye to all of his friends, including Homeless Tom, which disappears into the wind, symbolizing that he is in fact no longer a Santa denier. So the ending of the movie is pretty interesting. It leaves me with a lot more questions because the bell that he lost he ends up getting as a Christmas present. Basically confirming not only that the movie was never a dream, but also the fact that he now owns an official Santa denier detective. Honestly, this movie's freaking weird, it's scary, it's unsettling, and it's unique. But in a weird way, I do like this movie. Honestly, it's definitely not a movie that I'm gonna be watching every year, or I probably won't even watch it again, but it's interesting. I really don't think I liked it as much as a kid because you don't really catch on to all of the symbolism and the things that they're trying to say in the movie. When you're a kid, you just watch it and you're just like, where the fuck am I and what's going on? And I still don't know if they meant to make it creepy. This whole movie just feels like a dream where you can't figure out if it's a nightmare or not. Nothing ever really happens but you just keep expecting something to happen. But I just wanted to say before we go, thanks to all of you guys who stuck around this entire year and all of the new subscribers as well. It has definitely been a really strange year, not only for, you know, the entire world, but also for my channel. I bounced around between three or four different types of content, and I think I finally settled 
on what I truly want to do. And on top of that, all of the people who came to watch my Twitch streams this year, all the people who listened to my Fallen Pine music, and also just my joke Bionic Pig music as well. But everyone, please enjoy your Christmases. I know it's gonna be a really weird one this year, especially because of what's happening. Not many people are really gonna be able to hang out with their families, and that's understandable. But happy holidays to everyone, and I really hope you enjoy it. Take a break from life for a week, please, because we all need it, damn it. Hey. Ke Kevin? I can fix that. I can fix that. That makes no fucking sense, Kevin. That makes no sense at all. But thank you. Thank you for coming back for Christmas. Oh, holy night. The stars brightly shining. It is a shine of our dear Savior's birth.